for later. Hi everybody, my name is Dee Reinhardt. I'm a certified social media strategist. I love social media. It feeds the right side of my brain. It helps those creative juices flow and it helps with those squirrel moments that I have almost hourly. Uh, one of the things that I do is I help small businesses understand the how and why of marketing with social media. So what I do is I teach them about it, but then I also teach them how to do it. And it's different than when a, their grandkid or their kid teaches them, oh, we'll click here and do this and do that, because I have marketing background experience. And so it helps them understand why they need to do these things as well as how to actually do it. And with all of this COVID stuff going on, I'm actually learning quite a bit myself about how to really make things work even better. As I mentioned earlier, when some of you might not have been on the call yet, I'm helping my church live stream mass every day. And so one of the things that I had to do was I had to look at how the lighting is. I had to look at how the microphones work. I had to look at, uh, well, which way does the camera need to go? And so it really makes a difference as to how you make things happen. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go through a lot of my stuff and then I'm going to also talk about how to deal with something like this. As you can see right now, I'm looking at the camera. So keep that in mind when we talk about interviewing and practicing. So uh, keep that in mind. So what I wanted to let you know, my company name is Time to Market, and I did the text version of marketing. One of the things that I do on here is I have a list of workshops. So if you go to timetomarket.com slash workshops, at the bottom of the page, I'm gonna scroll down there, there's a section on job search, and the handout that goes along with today's webinar with our session today is the job search in the digital age handout and I updated it yesterday. So if you are looking for information on our class today, our session today, it's all right there. And I'm going to click on to it. So all of these, it is a PDF. So all of these are live links. So as you are going through them, I didn't do a couple of other things like Facebook and LinkedIn, but anything of the other pieces, if there is a link that you want to check out, you can just click on the document, click on that link and get that to, to work. All right, I didn't get somebody muted. Okay. <clears throat> and then, uh, so let me go back here. I want to also show you one other list that I've got um, Jim Fergal from WorkNet DuPage keeps a, an excellent, absolutely excellent list of job clubs in the northeast corner of Illinois. So this one is it's the last version I've got from him. Uh, he might have a more current version, but if you want to get this one, it's pretty close to up to date and it can be as easy as making a phone call to check to see what else is maybe a time is different or uh, an organizer is different. But that's, that's what you wanna do. So I started my introduction. I did a little bit weird because today is a little bit of a weird situation, but I started my introduction with my start with why. And one of the things that you need to do is figure out what your why is. And on here on the screen right now, I've got Simon Sinek's Start With Why, and that's where I got it. If you read that book or watch his TED Talk, it'll help you figure out a little bit more about why you want to do certain things. Uh, if you understand your why, then it makes it a whole lot easier for you to figure out what it is that you want to do, uh, especially if you are changing career paths and want to figure out that whole piece. Um, so that's, that's my suggestion for you to spend a 20 minute TED Talk time and uh, figure out your why. A Couple of things that we're gonna start with today are the actual platforms that people use uh, with social media and moving forward. So the first one, the biggest one that everybody, oh goodness, everybody 
knows about, and I'm not quite sure why this is doing this this way, but it's LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is the mothership of, of social media and the job search. It's kind of, kind of sort of how it started out. It was, it was different. If you, if you watch all the movies and everything, it, it is a little bit different, but it is the biggest professional job search platform there is. Uh, there are over 660 million users on the platform right now. And about 30% of those people are in the United States. So my philosophy is it's not about who you know, it's about who they know. So your network just broadens out and broadens out and broadens out. And the more people that have you have access to, the easier it is for you to network your way into a job and doing it socially. And I know Dennis talks about all kinds of tips and tricks. I teach a hands-on LinkedIn workshop. Uh, there's all kinds of people that can help you with LinkedIn. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on LinkedIn itself, but just know that if you don't have a LinkedIn profile and if you don't have it optimized, you're not going to be found the way that you want to be found. Uh, I do teach a class through Harper College and it happens once a month when they have it actually going. So it's, it's one of those things you want to watch for that. I also write a lot of tips and tricks. Uh, Bruce Bixler is another uh, LinkedIn guy that d loves sharing knowledge. Uh, Dennis shares knowledge. I share knowledge. So it's all right there for you to use. Uh, make sure that you're taking advantage of it. One of the other things that a lot of people might not know about is on Facebook, there is a tool that you can use to look for jobs. And if you go over here in the left-hand column while you're in your feed, under the explore piece, and if you scroll down to where it says see more, and then scroll down to the bottom of that list, it says jobs. So if you click on that jobs, it brings up a lot of jobs that are available. And nowadays, uh, some of these are pretty hyper-local based on your demographics of your profile. So you want to take a look at that. Um, there are still, today, there are some jobs that are considered essential and there are people that are still hiring. Uh, unfortunately, the unemployment rate is skyrocketing right now because of all the people that are being furloughed. I pray very strongly that we all get to get back to work and get the economy going as soon as it's safe to do so. Uh, but I, I highly doubt that that's going to be May 1st, like everybody is hoping that it will be. But anyway, take a look at these. Uh, you can sort some. Uh, I know this guy right here, this John Sutton. He's my, he's my insurance agent. So it, you can find some jobs on here that may fit your bill. So make sure that you take a look. You can filter and sort. So take a look at those pieces. One of the other things that you want to do is make sure that you know what shows up if you Google your name. So my name comes up associated with my website. It comes up in a whole list of pieces. This is all me. Uh, because I have worked very hard at making sure that if somebody enters D. Reinhardt, they're going to get me. These are all my pictures. Um, it's all links to all of my social media. My point here is, if you are submitting a resume or if you are adding a cover letter, one of the things that you want to know is what is an employer going to see if they look you up on Google or Bing or whatever platform they're using to do a search. If there is somebody else with your name, and that's highly likely for a lot of people, if there is somebody else with your name, you wanna make sure that you can explain what's going on or where you might show up on a search list. If there's something that is questionable as to history, maybe it's an arrest record, or maybe it's something up there about somebody dying or, or whatever it is. 
my suggestion to you is just address it immediately in a cover letter or in the email that you add to an online application. Know what people will find if they look for you on Google. Um, do I have any questions about anything so far? I just want to make sure that um, I'm trying to answer them while we're still in the vicinity of, of that part of the discussion. No questions yet. Looks okay. Look, okay. I want. I, oh. Sure, go ahead. Oh, sir. Um, I, I was curious of how, what were some of the steps that you did to make your name? You said you really worked hard to make sure if D. Reinhardt's, somebody Googles it, that your picture will be one of the first or so to pick it up. How, how did you accomplish that? I just got, uh, I got myself on every platform early on. I, I went looking, I got all of the personalized names. I did all of those pieces that you do when you set up social media. I, I went after it like a marketing campaign. So when I went out, uh, when I, when I uh, found my company name, I went looking to see who else had time to market and how it was spelled. And so that's why I settled on the way I spell my company name so that I could go out and get all of those platforms. One of the things that I suggest on LinkedIn is to get your personalized URL. If it's not going to be John Smith, is it going to be John Smith 2226? If that's the case, then make that your Twitter handle, make that your, uh, any other platform handle that you're going to use so that it's consistent across all of the platforms. Does that make sense? It does. Like now for, for people that have did not start early like yourself, is there any, is that, is there any, I don't know, is there any other tricks that you can think of that, that helps or I, I don't well, know. If adding that personalized number to yeah. a name will, will help you. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. All right. All right, um, moving on. One of the things, one of the processes with social media is everybody wants to be able to share thought leadership. You can do it on LinkedIn, you can do it on a website, you can do it uh, in a, like a Tumblr site or a blogger site, but if you don't have a place where you can express your opinions about your industry, you might fall a little bit flat on the expert level of things. Now, if somebody calls themselves an expert, run, just flat out run the other direction because that's just scary. If somebody calls you an expert, it's a different story, but you want people to go to your writings, to the places where you can express your opinions and think, yes, this person knows what they're talking about. And so I want to read more, I want to hear more, I want to talk to them. I need to pull them into my organization so that they can help me solve my problems. That's what job search is all about, is how can you solve somebody else's problem? If you don't have your own website, like I've got my own website, if you don't have your own website, you might want to set up a blogger platform. Blogger is free with Google. Uh, Tumblr, there's uh, WordPad, there's all kinds of blog platforms, but Blogger seems to be the biggest one. Uh, WordPress.org also has platforms that you can create, <clears throat> and but you want a blogging tool. And so when somebody comes to your blog, you're going to have a title on it, and you're going to see information that you've put out there opinions of things that you do in your industry. And you don't have to come up with new information on a regular basis. You just have to write your opinion about articles that you may have read. Um, people look at Pinterest. Um, Pinterest is to women as fantasy football is to most men. Pinterest is more about recipes. It's more about clothes. But there are a lot of things that you can find on Pinterest that might help you. One of the things that I suggest about Pinterest is looking at what a company posts and their corporate culture. How are they representing 
how they treat their employees on their on their social media platforms and it might be facebook it might be uh, linkedin it might be pinterest but look everywhere at what it is that you're trying to find out about them and then a lot of companies will post links to blog articles that they've written or maybe if they are in an artistic industry they may be posting job postings and and have a link and a reference on a platform like this i'm going to take a drink <clears throat> you also want to <clears throat> take a look at things like uh, work from home schemes. Make sure that they're real. If they seem too good to be true, they, that's probably what's happening. But you can take a look at different ways, um, 11 reliable ways. Read it, digest it a little bit, think about it, and then if you see it in more than one place, uh, from more than one source, it might be something to investigate. The next tool I want to talk about is SlideShare. And uh, on SlideShare, I just changed my, my image. On SlideShare, there's a way that you can put information up about yourself. SlideShare has had a love-hate relationship with LinkedIn. They're in love with them again. So it's one of those things that if you have the ability to create a PowerPoint presentation about you or things that you've done, do that. Post it on SlideShare and then link that to your LinkedIn profile. I write a lot of, I do a lot of presentations for Illinois WorkNet at a state level. And so one of the things that I had been doing for a while is anything that I created for Illinois WorkNet, I would post on SlideShare. A, they liked it because it got their information out, and B, it helped build my SlideShare platform. So what you can do is do a PowerPoint presentation about your resume. What have you done here? What have you done here? Make it a visual representation of you and then include that on your LinkedIn profile so that if somebody's looking at it at three o'clock in the morning, they can dive through there and take a look at everything that's there. Any questions I need to answer? No. Nothing yet. Okay. All right. Twitter. Uh, Twitter doesn't, you don't have to have a Twitter profile to search Twitter. So as you can see right here, I'm not logged in. I'm going to do a search. I got to put my glasses on. And I'm going to look for hashtag jobs in, um, I'm going to do Elgin, Illinois. And no results. But if I do a hashtag marketing jobs, I can look and I see there's a post here from April 14th. And it's got a hashtag of marketing jobs on it. So we can take a look. Um, maybe this is, oh, this is the United Kingdom. That's probably not good for here, but you can also filter. So if I say near me or from people I follow, you can use some filters in here and you can find jobs on Twitter. Years ago when Twitter first came out and human resources departments were initially figuring out how to use Twitter, they would post a job, link it back to their website, and then when they found a, a customer, I'm sorry, not a customer, if they found a, a potential employee and they found it through Twitter, they could go to their boss and say, hey, look, I just saved $1,000 from placing a job ad and I found these six recruits or however many they found. So check Twitter on a regular basis. Uh, you would have to search regularly you have to find out what your hashtags would be you have to take a look at that but you might find something that you wouldn't have found on a job board because it hadn't been posted yet uh, make sure that if you apply for that job that you are putting where you found the job as you are posting for it 
or I'm sorry, as you are applying for it or sending your cover letter for that. Other, another thing that I love about Twitter are Twitter chats. And I used to sit down every Tuesday at lunch and I sat on a tweet chat about um, something to do with career development. And it was a bunch of people. So if you're looking at this, there's hashtags associated with all kinds of, let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, there's hashtags here and then the topic that you can discuss and it has a little bit of a description about it. It's got who's in charge of the tweet chat, when they meet, what time they meet, and what time zone, and then where the website actually is. So go through here, check this list out, find a time that's convenient for you. Try to do it in your industry because there, there's no one except maybe Einstein that could know everything. If, if you've got a photographic memory, you might be able to read a lot and remember everything, but this is a really great tool to find out new tips, new tricks, new things in your industry, and use that to your advantage. They're all over, all different times of the day and night. There's all different kinds of information available. Use it as a learning tool as you're trying to build your, your knowledge base. Next, we're gonna talk about video resumes. And one of the things that is big these days are video resumes. And more and more and more, you can do things by just holding your phone and shooting a video this way. You can use a tool like Snagit um, you could use a Zoom meeting and just do some recording. There's all kinds of tools that you can use to make a video resume. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a lot of people that maybe you just talk into the camera. Uh, 30 seconds, no more than that. Uh, this one I do like to show. This is a... Hi, my name is Ryan and I'm a funny web developer. I'm looking for a job. And instead of just sending out the usual, I cover a resume, I'm making a quick video so that you can more easily learn a little about me. Because we all know what happens to a lot of cover letter resumes. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm from a tiny town called Franklin, North Carolina, which is right here. 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 Right all right, this goes on. What I do have to tell you is there was a guy probably seven years ago that had from New South Wales that had the exact same webinar that this, or I'm sorry, video resume that this girl has done. So she copied his idea and just ran with the same information from her life as he had put in as from his life. She probably had a little bit of help with this, but she does do IT stuff, so she probably had some friends that could help her with this. It doesn't have to be this extravagant. Like I said, it could just be you talking to a camera, but make sure that you're talking to the camera instead of looking at your notes and then talking and looking at your notes and then talking. Make sure that you look professional, whether it's professionally done or not. Take a look search video resumes, look at the different options that are available and see how many different ways that you can do a good resume. This uh, video CV from Robert De Niro from that movie, The Intern, that's a good example of, of how somebody can build a video resume as well. Okay, we're gonna dive into some of the other tools that are available to help you build a presence on LinkedIn. One of them is about.me. One of the things that you have to understand with these kinds of tools is the tool itself gets the search engine optimization, but if somebody is looking, they will see your name if you create it. This one at the time took in the information from my LinkedIn profile, so whatever was already in my about section it showed up 
over here in this in this part over here. So that's one of the things that you can use is is find out if it actually links with your LinkedIn profile because if you work hard and make your LinkedIn profile work the right way why reinvent the wheel if nothing else just copy and paste your about section into the other tools that you're going to be using another tool that can help you is Behance Behance is a portfolio tool it lets you put things in a portfolio that you can share a link with somebody. Uh, I do a lot of photography and I do a lot of graphic design work. So I had created some portfolios. I have not added to this because I, um, I just haven't updated it lately. But the, these are the places where you can put things. And you don't have to be artistic to have a portfolio. You might be a welder and have pictures of, of great welds that you've created, or you might be an accountant and have great, great spreadsheets that you can take pictures of. So that's all something that you can do and put into a portfolio. Uh, documents, certificates, credentials, all sorts of things can go into a portfolio that you can have for use for other people. Now, another tool that's available is box.net. From what I understand from talking to different IT people, Box.net is one of the more secure online cloud storage places that you can trust what's going up there. There's also Dropbox, uh, One, OneDrive, there's Google Drive, there's all sorts of places where you can store documents. Make sure that they are safe and secure so that somebody doesn't hack in and change your resume to something that you don't necessarily want it to be. Um, so using a cloud storage tool to your advantage will help you be able to share documents with other people at, at a drop of a hat. Uh, brand yourself. Now, I'm going to caution this one does ask for money and the only reason i show this one is for the first part of when i started playing with it it showed me what my risk was and where i showed up so i know the one gentleman asked the question earlier how did i build my brand on the internet and people can't really individuals can't really have a brand but you can have an identity and so this helped me figure out what my positive or negative identity was. I wouldn't probably go any further than, than what is free on here, but they want you to pay so that you can add more sites and, and look and see what else you might be able to do. They say that they can help you clean up things, but at any point in time, somebody can go back and use that uh, shot in history or whatever that program is and get a look at what the internet has on you from a particular date in time. You can do a, lot, you can do a uh, purge of your own social media if you wanna do that so that you don't have any questionable items out there, but you can do that on your own. Another tool, uh, I found this one, Career Cloud. It's a, it's a nice resource for different how-to guides and what to do. <clears throat> you can't ever read enough opinions about different things, so you can find different information. I just like this one because of the way they had their articles written. <clears throat> Glassdoor is a, a resource. I've heard from a lot of people that it's the best way to find a income guide but all of this is based on information that people have entered it is not taken from any data any state or federal data i'm going to show you another resource that you can use but this one has some good information about companies that people have written what you do need to remember is more people will write negative reviews and comments then they will write positive ones <laughs> and that's very uh, 
you can see that very strongly on things like Yelp or Urban Spoon or any of the review sites that have those reviews. So you have to take everything with a grain of salt. Understand that sometimes people are writing good things, sometimes they're writing bad things because they've had a bad experience, but in most cases, uh, the bad comments always outweigh the good ones. The Muse, the Muse has great articles. Uh, Illinois WorkNet relies on the Muse a lot for finding out different information when it comes to job search. There is also a component of this that you can explore companies. So if you're looking, it's kind of very, it's very similar to Glassdoor when it comes to companies. I haven't seen a whole lot of, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I haven't seen a whole lot of companies in the Chicago area, but if more businesses start using this, it might, it's a possibility that it will build more on the, on the Chicago market. Next.com is another source website for jobs for watching articles and different things like that they do have a, an aggregator of sort that you can look for different positions again anything that you're comfortable with use it to your advantage these are all just tools that i found that i like to share uh, with different people now this is uh, resume up is sorry is a tool that I do recommend for creating an applicant tracking system ready resume. So it takes out all of the formatting out of your resume so that it's all just the the txt file uh, that will not have any formatting so if you create a word uh, resume it has all of that formatting in there and it will bog down an applicant tracking system that just scans and looks for the keywords that are associated with the job that they're after so as you're looking at different tools you can use this one for to create that ats resume it also gives you the ability to create an infographic resume which is one of those Let's make it pretty and, and leave it behind as a handbill sort of piece, as a, a marketing tool kind of piece. I like this tool, it was easy to use uh, when I was trying to create an infographic resume with it. It allowed me to import my information from my LinkedIn profile. So anytime that you don't have to reinvent the wheel, I like that as an option. Do we have any uh, questions yet? Uh, I don't. Nope. No. <clears throat> We're all good right now. All right. Oh, I do see something that they sent it to me. Um, she needs to keep anonymity. Um, so I guess to answer this question, I guess to answer this question, um, if you need to maintain a level of anonymity, put what you want to have into a cloud storage folder and then just share the link with the people that you want to share it with. So I think that that would probably be the easiest way to do it. I would try to have at least a LinkedIn profile if you think you can get away with that because if people can't find you on a Google search at all, it's, it's just, it doesn't bode well for you to be able to be found. Um, go on Twitter, are you talking about the tweet chat? Nancy, you can get the handout from my website. So if you want to uh, get that, and Kurt, uh, charge for resume up. I believe you can get the ATS and uh, at least one infographic for free. Uh, I think if you start doing more and more and more, they will probably charge you, but I have not pushed it to that limit yet. Okay, and I hope that answered the one question. 
Yes, okay, thank you very much. All righty, next, um, job scan. This website looks screwier than the last time I was on it, so I'm not sure what's going on with them. Uh, but again, it's a, just another tool that's there. I, I'm thinking I might be removing this from my list because I don't like the way that this looks right now. One of the things that I found was a resource with a bunch of articles, and this was uh, 15 tools to create an outstanding visual resume. Like I said, you might find a tool that you like that is really easy for you to work with. I know that over time, if I can't find an easy way to work with something, I move on to the next thing because there's too many things out there. So this one has 15 different tools that you can use. Visual CV we're going to look at. It's the granddaddy of them all. Uh, Visualize Me I have used in the past. I have used Resume by Canva in the past. And um, I think right now that's all of them from this list that I've used. But what they do is they give you a little look-see about what's going on in there and you can find different things. Uh, the Visualize Me is, um, lets you do the infographic type thing as well. So we talked about Visual CV. Oh, sorry, let me get logged in here real quick. So, okay, so one of the things that you can do with Visual CV <clears throat> is again import information from LinkedIn. It lets you have a little image on here. Uh, one of the things that I found out from an HR person is you're not supposed to put your image on a resume that you submit. You can bring this with you, but you're not allowed to submit a resume that has an image on it. You can put logos on if you want to, you just can't put your face on a, on a tool. But this one was drag and drop. I liked it a whole lot because it was super simple to just grab things and move it in. Again, whatever tool is comfortable for you, that you feel comfortable using, that's gonna be the tool that works best for you. Now, one of the things that I wanna share with you is a couple of things on Illinois WorkNet. I have a contract with Illinois WorkNet. I do a lot of training for them. I do a lot of project management for them. I have been working with them for nine years now. Uh, I used to work for a workforce development agency in, in Kane County. Um, we had a very close relationship with Illinois WorkNet because we were one of the local workforce investment areas. And so I got to know them very well. They picked me up immediately when I got laid off nine years ago. And I have learned this tool inside and out. And so one of the couple of things that I want to show you is if you're logged in to Illinois WorkNet and you click on the drop down arrow by the My Dashboard, we have a, a lot of tools that are available for you. And one of them is a resume tool. I'm going to click into this and hopefully, yes, it opened up into a new window. On here, this is free, so you don't have to worry about paying for anything on this tool. It is uh, very robust. I've done hour-long webinars on this and just scratched the surface for this. But you have the ability to create resumes. Once you create one, you can clone it and save it, because everybody tells you all the time, right, that you're supposed to send a resume for each job posting. So you send one for here, you personalize it and customize it for the next one and on down the line. So you can do that with this tool by just cloning. It has all kinds of letters that you can write, including cover letters. So you can create one, modify it just slightly, and it's all right there. You can create a portfolio. So I've got a portfolio in here that has, I, I'm graphic heavy, so this, it, 
wasn't good for this tool to have a whole lot of images in there, but I've got a lot of links so that I take people to links uh, of things that I've designed and websites that I've built and tools that I've worked on. So you can create a portfolio in here. The other thing that you can do in here is do an assessment tool. You can do practice interviews and this is a great feature because it has a video where you can actually talk to your camera. Uh, it, you can talk into your camera to see how you're actually pronouncing, pr pronouncing, pronouncing your words, enunciating clearly or not, uh, whether you're looking at the camera or whether you're fidgeting or whether you're playing with your hair or doing all that kind of stuff that you're not supposed to do. So you can practice your interviews on here. You can create a video resume in here. It gives you an option of having cue cards or not having cue cards. My suggestion is get so comfortable with your 30 second elevator pitch that you can do it without having any notes. Then record a video resume. And then last but not least, you can create a little mini website where you can post your resume, you can post your portfolio, you can uh, post all of the pieces that are in this tool and have it be available for you. So that's one of the tools that are available on Illinois or through Illinois WorkNet that's free for you just because you have an account with Illinois WorkNet. Another thing that I want to show you on Illinois WorkNet is that when you are exploring careers and if you're trying to find your next position, one of the things that you can do is come down into their Explore Careers section, go to the Careers, Wages, and Trends area, click on the page. It takes you to a, a page with 16 different career pathway areas. And say we click into Health Science and we go to an audiologist, and that's somebody that checks the ears it gives you a, a wages range. One of the other things that you can do on here is under the job facts and wages right here at the top, click on that, go to wages and trends. And in here, it gives you the pay range for the 25th, let me make this a little bit bigger. the 25th percentile up to the 75th percentile by economic development region. So if you are in DuPage County or in Cook County, if somebody asks you, well, what do you wanna get paid for your job? You can very confidently say, because this is pulled from Illinois labor market information. So it's based on data that's been put into a system and then pulled, extracted out by SOC code. You can say to somebody, well, I understand the wage range for this position in DuPage County is $83,000, $83,000 to $110,000. I'm sure that you will pay me commensurate with my experience. So this shows that you've gotten some wage range data on this position for where you live. So you're not just flying by the seat of your pants and saying, like somebody told me when I got out of college, oh, you can make $40,000 a year right out of college doing this job. Well, that was when God was a child. And so that wasn't true when I, when I came out. And I was lucky to get a job for I think it was like $18,000 way back when. So use this data to your advantage. It also gives you some additional labor market information about employment and outlook. You don't wanna go for a job that has a poor outlook. You wanna make sure that there's some growth going with that. So that's, uh, that's one of the tools. And then um, we have other tools available, we've got um, where you can look for training, you can, uh, there's a job skills guide that talks about soft skills, the employability skills that everybody wants. There's a digital literacy guide that if you need to learn how to use a computer better, you can do that. There's articles about resume writing and then the tool itself. 
So there's all sorts of things available on Illinois WorkNet for free. Moving on, niche job boards, uh, niche. I don't know how you guys say it. I kind of bounce back and forth with the way I say that word. But the whole point of niche job boards is they're focused, they're tunnel built vision on a particular industry. So as we're looking at a particular type of industry, maybe you want to find a job in retail, or maybe you want to find uh, something from a tech uh, philosophy, or maybe it's a culinary job. Take a look through here. Perhaps you're a, a person that's a diverse culture. You can find a diversity job here. We have financial jobs. So take a look at these niche job boards. I believe this site also had 100 plus job boards for job seekers and recruiters. So take a look at this one as well. Uh, the, big, the big guys like Indeed, uh, Career Builder, uh, Monster, those are all there, but you want to try to find those boards that not everybody is looking at. So take a look at these articles from my, uh, from my handout. And then we've got another, <clears throat> another article. There's, so there's three articles that relate to job boards and niche job boards. So take a look on there and make sure that you are looking for those, those right boards. Like there's nonprofit job boards. Um, SHRM, uh, I'm gonna talk about them in just a couple of minutes. So that's uh, one of the things that you can do. Let me check these questions here. Um, in doing a Google search, what keywords would help Illinois WorkNet type site for other states to help with salary ranges in other states? I would go to I would go to their work. I would look for workforce on that. Um, so like if it was Indiana workforce, I know uh, Texas has the te Texas workforce agency. So look for workforce and then look for labor market information. I know that we're relatively unique with that site that we've created uh, with that page, but I know um, out of the 50 states, there's probably about 15 states that have some of that same similar information. But look for labor market information and workforce and those are the two areas where you would probably find the most uh, luck in finding those those similar resources okay dokie um upwork is an a site where you can find freelance type positions so Fiverr is a site where people will do things and, and it's supposed to be $5, but this Upwork is for people that maybe can do some freelance type kind of positions, maybe on contract, maybe you're doing it part time while you're between jobs. Uh, so this is some place where you can put your skills out there um, be careful of sites like Craigslist. Um, they're, they're there and there are jobs posted, but you want to try to rely upon a little bit more uh, positive website. Not that Craigslist is all bad, but there are some iffy things there. And then while we're looking at this, gig economy. People are doing more and more things by the spot, uh, Uber, Do Do DoorDash, all of those gig kind of things. Everybody used to think music musicians were the only ones that gigged, but nowadays the gig economy is, is more and more and more prevalent because people can do it when they want to. I met a man not too long ago that he drives Uber because he can be home to get the kids to school. He can be home to get the kids from school because his wife works full time. And he can drive in between, he can drive late into the evening. 
and they lived close enough to the airport that they were able, he was able to pick up jobs consistently. So that's uh, something that you need to consider these days is, is what's available out there that you can do on your terms. Let me check here. Um, I'll show you where the handout is posted. Um, I don't have any, Christy, I don't have anybody waiting, but I will let you back in if you have to restart. Okay, now the next piece, everybody talks about Indeed, Monster, all those kind of big ones. Well, Google has just blown the roof off of job search. If you go to a Google search bar and type jobs near me, just like this says right here, it will give you a listing of all of the jobs that are out there that are near whatever zip code you put in. And then if you click, what, like right here it says 100 plus more jobs. If I click on there, it gives me the list of all the jobs I can filter by category, I can filter by location, date posted, the type of the job, company type, I can filter, filter, filter. And it gives you a whole list of everything that is out on the internet because we know what a giant Google is and it gives you all of that information. Um, and then additionally, if you type jobs for veterans, it gives you the same thing, but what it does is it lets you enter your military code and it's your MOS. Um, and I was not in the military, I apologize. Thank you for your service if you were, um, but you put your MOS code in from what your job was in the military and it will match your MOS code with civilian jobs that are out there right now. So that's something that you can tell your military friends about. So moving into the next section, we have Info USA. Uh, Info USA and Reference USA are two very similar tools. So a lot of people can find this in their local library. I know that the uh, Career Resource Center up in Lake Forest has it from, from their system. Uh, there are the way to use this to your advantage is to look at potential jobs. And this is when you would be sending out a broadcast letter to potential employers. You create the very best generic resume that you can, and then you send this out to somebody in your area that might potentially have a position available in your industry. The library will probably give you one uh, category, one industry category, and one zip code, and you can see what's there and, and what's going on in that area. Um, and I think you can do it with a mobile request. So like if you have a mobile library card, you can get into their system and use it that way as well. So this is a really good research tool. You never know when somebody's going to say, oh yeah, I need a new person to do this because they're expanding their business. And you might just have sent your resume at the opportune moment to get in front of the person that's making those hiring decisions. So that's, that's one of those things that you want to try to look at. The other thing that we have uh, on LinkedIn, we have an Illinois virtual job club network. We share uh, things in here about who's helping who and uh, job fairs that are coming up. So you can join this. I happen to manage this group. I'm happy to uh, let you into the group if you live in Illinois or if you are a recruiter or HR person from any company that is hiring in Illinois. 
So all you have to do is just submit a request to join the group. It's the Illinois Virtual Job Club Network. Also on, on Illinois WorkNet, there is a service finder. And that is, if, if, it's, if you're looking in the menu, it's under Network and Connect. And it is the Illinois WorkNet Service Finder. And what this does is it lets you look in Illinois for what kind of service you need. Um, Tom and Judy, if you don't have your job club listed in here, I would suggest that you do that so that if somebody is looking for information about your job club, they can find it. And then you can try to um, build that partner relationship with Illinois WorkNet as well. One of the things that I like to show people because you don't necessarily think about it, Chambers of Commerce will post jobs for their members as a benefit for their members. And these are all very typically hyper local jobs, meaning that they are within that geographic area that, encompass, that is encompassed by the zip code where you might live. So check your local Chamber of Commerce and look for the jobs that are listed through the Chamber of Commerce where you live. Similarly, if you belong to a industry-related organization, so for example, SHRM. Nancy, are you a, a member of SHRM? I know you're muted, but you can always type yes in the chat for me. But if you're a member of SHRM, you can take a look on their website. Also like architects or uh, manufacturing, those organizational sites will more than likely post jobs for their members as well. So take a look at those, those industry sites and look for the magazines and different things, the trade magazines that come out and take a look and make sure that you've got um, things available for you that would be also a networking opportunity if you were to show up at one of these events for that organization. Everybody thinks about what time it takes to do different things and how are you going to track <coughs> what you're doing. <coughs> Throat's getting dry. <coughs> How you're going to track your job process. Well, I found this tool. It's called Trello. It's free. It's an internet-based tool. And what you can do is it's a Kaizen board. You can create columns for your job search functions. I created one. It's an online application and paper applications. Did I hear back from the company? Did I send a follow-up letter? Have I had an interview? Did I send a thank you letter? Did I get a rejection letter? And rejection letters are good news because especially if they'll tell you why they rejected you, then you can make that improvement to yourself. But along here, if you type in the information, uh, all the information is in here and what you add to it and all that kind of good stuff. You can put dates on it. You can put due dates on things. You can put attach files to it. So if you wanted to get a copy of that online application that you filled out, you can add it to the card. Then once it, you have the card, you can move it by just dragging and dropping and moving it to that you heard back from them or that you sent a follow-up letter or that you had an interview. You can just move these between pieces back and forth and yes, I sent a thank you letter. This is a, a tool that's available. And just to let you know, I am rebuilding El Employment 101 on Illinois WorkNet. We're going to be putting a tool just like this into Employment 101 so that it'll all of that stuff will all be in one place on, on your dashboard for Illinois WorkNet. Then, uh, so this is a time-saving tool. It's a tracking tool. It helps you figure out what you've got where. Uh, you can file the documents on it as well. Okay, so one of the things that uh, we want to talk about here is questions. Everybody should have questions that you ask at an interview 
to show the organization that you've done some research. So this was one of those things that I found uh, that I thought was really good. Uh, and here it says to focus on the four C's. How do you connect with the person? How do you understand what their culture is like? What challenges keep them up at night? And how would you identify the next steps in the hiring process? So this is just an article that I found. Take a look at it. I thought it was a really a great way of asking some questions near the end of the interview. So let's talk just a little bit about interviews. So right now, I, I am using probably one of the more positive tools that have come out recently. Zoom's been around for a long time, but it's become very much more in vogue right now just because of COVID and everything that's happening. But one of the things that you have to realize is when you're having a video interview or a, an online interview, you have to think of the camera. So like I'm pointing at my camera right here. You have to think of your camera as the other person. So you wanna to talk to the camera. You wanna make sure that your background is clean. If you don't have a clean background, like I see a um, Vicki is sitting in front of a blank wall. That's excellent. She found a spot in her home that was clean. Um, I noticed that Kevin is probably looking at me from a laptop. And so his laptop is down here and the screen is tilted back so that he can see the screen better, but that also means that I'm seeing his ceiling. So you wanna make sure that your camera's at the right level, the lighting is appropriate on you. I, I'm in a dark room right now and I've got my screens, I've got two screens. So I've got the light from my screens on me. It's kind of washing me out a little bit. So if I step back a little bit more, my color is better. Try and figure out where you look good on your camera. Like Tom, I saw Tom go out and get two tissue boxes, I think is what they were. And he set his laptop up on his lap, uh, on those tissue boxes so that it was at the right level so that he was looking into his camera. <clears throat> so, um, I've got this rack right here. I don't know how easily you guys can see this, but it's this rack. And this is what my laptop sits on. I think this was $50, maybe even less. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, I can set that on my table right there by me. And I pull up my laptop and A, it's at the right level because I stand up and work. It's at the right level for me to type, but it also puts my screen up so that I'm looking <coughs> at my camera, <coughs> I'm looking at my camera eye level. And so I'm looking into my camera and I'm talking to you right now as if you're standing right there. Now, the only bad thing about a webinar is if you're trying to watch reactions of people, you do have to look down. Everybody understands that. But if you're actually talking to the person through the camera, they'll appreciate that. You want to be dressed appropriately from the waist up because they're not going to see what you got on down here. So you can have your PJ pants on down on the bottoms, but make sure that you look professional at the top. Put your makeup on if you're a woman. Do your hair up like you would be going to a, uh, an interview. Make sure that you look just like you would if you were there in person from the waist up. And then uh, background, if uh, right now it's real dark back in here, but on, on Zoom, I gotta put my glasses on so I can show you this. Um, on Zoom for, for sure, you can choose a virtual background. So I can make myself look like I'm in front of the Golden Gate Bridge. I can do this grass thing. I can make it look like I am in front of, I don't know, hovering in the moon craft or whatever they call that space station thing. I can look like I'm doing the Northern Lights. 
I can look like I'm on a beach. Well, one of my coworkers is sheltering in place. Oh no, I left that on. Hang on, let me get out of this. <laughs> um, all right, one of my coworkers is sheltering in place from her upstairs linen closet. <laughs> she has room to put a desk in there, but there were shelves on the back and she said, I can't turn on my video camera because it looks horrible behind me. Well, I said, go find a sheet or a blanket or something and put it up. So she rigged up a, a nice backdrop that looks like wallpaper. Well, I know it's a blanket, but it looks like wallpaper. And so you can put a screen up behind you if you have no place else. If you don't have a plain wall, you can put a screen up behind you. But the important, the most important piece is make sure that you're talking to the other person on the other end. And if they're talking to you, look at their picture. I mean, you know, that's what happens. But you wanna make sure that you're trying to still have a conversation with the other person in the camera. So do we have any questions about any of that kind of stuff that we were just talking about? No, no, I don't see that. Okay, oh. all right. Um, let me go here first. Remember I was talking about the practice interviews? This is a great way to do some of that practice. So I looked, I did some online searching for practice interview tools. There really isn't anything better than what is on the tool on Illinois WorkNet for creating a new interview. So I want everybody to, if you don't already, sign up, create an Illinois WorkNet account. All they're gonna ask you for is your name and email address. They don't ask date of birth or any of that other kind of stuff until you participate in a program. Sign up, get into the resume tool, start practicing. There's, I believe it's 10 sets of interview sets of questions and there's 20 questions in each set. So you can practice, it gives you the ability to Use your webcam to practice the interview questions and it will give you what the answer should be. And it lets you watch how, you, how you've been doing things. The other thing that you can do is use your cell phone and just do a selfie video, hold it up, practice talking to your phone if nothing else, so that you can see how you are interacting with yourself on the, on the camera and how you are speaking your facial tics. Are you doing ums and uhs and, bleh and all that stammering stuff? Practice well enough that you can get through those questions without having to pause and do all the audio and facial tics that will, would be annoying that you might not do in person that you could potentially do on video. So use that to your advantage. Do we have any other, do we have any questions out there that I haven't gotten to? I think I've, I've pretty much gotten everything. Yeah, looks like you're up to speed. All right. The last piece that I'd like to talk about is, um, I met Arnie through LinkedIn. He, they, there used to be a feature that you could ask questions and people would uh, answer for you. And Arnie is somewhere out on the East Coast, and I met him on LinkedIn, and I just really liked what he had to say about things. So this is an article that he wrote back in 2012. That's how long I've been using this piece, because I think it's that good. And what he says in the article, and I'm just gonna summarize it here, this is a question that you would ask somebody not in an initial interview, not at a panel, but it would be at that interview that you are talking to the person that you would directly report to. <clears throat> and if that's the first interview, fine, but it's somebody that's, that's going to be working directly one-on-one -on -one with you. You say to them <clears throat> as, a, as a final kind of question, all right, let's envision that I'm that you hired me, I'm working for you, it's time for my one year review. 
what is it that I will have done right that will cause you to give me a great raise and a, and a glowing review? So what happens here is the person is thinking about the fact, oh, well, I hired them. Oh, they did a good job. And oh, here's what I want you to do. And what this does is if the person can get around that company, that company line of what the job description says and tell you what their priorities are, make notes, write those down. Because then if you get that job, you go in and you say, now I understand you wanted to do this. Uh, tell me how we can get that going, how, how I can help you get that accomplished. And that way it makes them, it gives you that advantage that you remember what they talked about to you in the interview. All right. I am about done. My throat is about done. Uh, here's the handout. So I know somebody was saying about the handout, but it's on the <clears throat> workshops page on my website. And it's down at the bottom under job search in the digital age, along with the list of various job clubs that Jim Fergal does. Are you guys, are, are Tom, are you in, um, is the interfaith on this list? No, I don't think so. We'll have to get on it if we're not. Oh, we're, no, we're on Jim's list. Oh, are we? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Towards the end under Western Springs, I think. <laughs> All right. D, D, I have a question for you. Sure. Um, so I have not set up a Twitter handle. Um, do you, what do you tell people about like, you know, here's the advantage of maybe why you should consider creating one and posting things. And then what would you post about in your life? Or is it just, I, I appreciate you showing the advantages of how it could be helpful. Um, but I assume that you, that you might have one and that maybe, you know, how do you decipher what's good to do and what's not? Um, okay. So, I think of Twitter as an aside piece. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm really <clears throat> losing it. Sorry, I should. Um, I think of Twitter as an aside piece. I think it's a good extra. I think for the tweet chats, it's a wonderful tool because you can learn things from it. But as far as Twitter goes, I. I think that there are some people that use it and it's a certain age group. Um, most people will find more benefit from LinkedIn or from even Facebook, depending upon what industry they're in, uh, than, than Twitter. I think uh, there has been talk of Twitter uh, in the past two or three years that they're gonna go down the, the tubes. So I wouldn't invest a whole lot of energy in Twitter, but if you do find a handle that you want to use, try to make it something that is professional uh, for lack of, of anything else, because you want any of those pieces to be looked at favorably. And you wanna make sure that you're not competing with somebody, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, competing is the wrong word, you don't want to cause conflict with somebody. So for example, one of the things that I use when I'm teaching LinkedIn is <clears throat> if you are a dyed in the wool, bleed blue Cubs fan, and you happen to be interviewing with somebody that wears nothing but socks, black and white, and that could really cause a, a, a butting of the heads. You don't want to do that. So you have to always make sure that you're, handles and your email addresses and all of those sorts of things are as neutral professional as possible gotcha. thank you and it's always good to if you can use your name and a date that applies to you all right any other questions And look, I'm looking at my list, of my screen with all of, my, all of you guys on it. Link. Uh, let me put the. Let me just put the link to the handout in the chat pod. I think it was in the. 
I think it was in your follow-up letter. Oh, what did I just do here? Let me copy this. And I got to turn the light on so I can see. All right. And hit enter there. All right, so I just put the link in the chat pod there. So that if you uh, need to find it and didn't get it out of your emails, you can. So let me know if there's anything that I can help you with. Uh, if you invite me to connect with you on LinkedIn, I'm happy to do that, but please personalize your invitation. That's one of my bugaboos is, is people that don't personalize those invitations. Yeah. All right, I'm going to unmute everybody just in case there is a question that you want to ask. So if you've got some background noise going on, please mute yourself. But otherwise, is there anything that I can answer for anybody that doesn't want to type it into the chat? Thank you, Dennis. Just thank you for all your information. You're welcome, Carl. Uh, cat, sorry, cat. I, I can't read without my glasses on the computer. Okay, it was cat. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so I've got this recorded. I'm going to share it with Tom and Judy so they can put it on one of their resources. Um, remember that these uh, items change kind of regularly. I find things that I like better and I find things that don't work anymore. So I will, I do update this periodically. So if you uh, uh, check my website, I'll, I have the most current version up and I have it dated. As well. All right. All right, well, thank you everybody. I'm going to stop the recording now.